What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of In the Trenches with Jake Cradle and Gavin Bartholomew here on the Post Gazette Sports Now YouTube channel and podcast network. Guys, as always, I'm joined by Jake and Gavin, two key players on Pitt's offense. Another week, another loss for the Panthers. This one comes at the hands of number 17, North Carolina, 41 24 final score. Pitt falls to one and three on the season. Guys, uh, you know, it's I'm starting to think that this show might be bad luck. Uh, it, it just might feel that way, or probably not. Probably some other things. Um, but in all seriousness, I'll uh, we'll let you both just give your first impression on that loss. We'll start with Gavin, being that you know he he was on the field for it. Yeah, no, um, you know it was a tough loss, um, but I feel like offensively, I felt like we've grown. Um, you know, showing that we can move the ball. You know, our first two opening drives, we went down, and you know we kind of marched the field, did what we want, and you know we had a. You know, we felt good going, uh, you know, after those two drives. But then, you know, Phil got hurt. Um, CV stepped up, but, you know, uh, it was tough. Um, defense, you know, their offense was, you know, kind of unstoppable. Drake May, you know, doing what he does, dealing out um, passes. But, yeah, know, it was a tough week. But, um, you know, we learned a lot. And, you know, going into this week, you know, we feel really confident. So, yeah, I know it was definitely tough uh, missing in, but uh, just watching. I mean, it was it was great to see the offensive line play play extremely well. I mean, they they protected the passer. You know, they opened up holes for Rod and the guys. I mean, it was it was just great to see them come together and put those two first drives. And like we talked last week about, you know, just seeing one go through and um, you know, seeing that first touchdown was huge. And I think you know they got rolling there, but uh, we stalled out a little bit. And then in the games like that where it's going to be a shootout, you can't you can't stall out. You know, it, you have to be you have to score every chance you get. Every time you take the field, you have to either put three on the board or get in the end zone. And um, that's what, I mean, we didn't do it. So, I mean, that's when, you know, Phil, Phil going down to halftime, I feel like it hurt us, you know, maybe a little bit of uh, chemistry off with, you know, Christian and the wide receivers. But, I mean, that's just kind of like our mentality, though. It has to be next man out mentality. And, you know, we can't have any excuses about it. So, I mean, I think it's going to be huge this week, just building off last week's uh, success in the run game and uh, pass game and, you know, see where that can take us on at uh, Virginia Tech at 8 p.m. Jake, I wanted to ask you just, and obviously you don't have to disclose any information, but I mean, how frustrating is it for you to be watching that game? I, I don't know if you're on the sidelines or in the booth or watching from home, but not being able to play. I also want to point out that there are some people who think that I get inside information from doing this show. That's simply not the case. When I found out that Jake was injured, it was from a totally other source, and I couldn't believe it because I was like, just talk to the guy like a day <laughs> So he did a really good job of putting on that poker face and being a steel trap here. So kudos to you on that end. But um, yeah, overall, I mean, what's that like for you to be, to be watching from home, knowing that, you know, you want to be out there and, and helping your guys? No, it's definitely, it's, uh, it's painful. It's, uh, it's one of those things where, you know, you want to be available every week for your team. And that's one thing, you know, not being available kind of sucks. You know, it's like one of those things where I just want to do whatever I can to win. At the end of the day, like my job is one of those jobs where, I don't get really any, you know, pats on the back or anything. I just – I open up holes for running backs and I protect the quarterback as best I can. And, you know, not being out there and seeing the guys, you know, go to work and just missing. I'm like, damn, like that's – you know, it's an opportunity I'm going to miss. But, I mean, it's one of those things where, you know, I got to get better and we'll see where see where I can, you know, help them. I want to ask how you thought Terrence Moore did in your spot at center. You know what? I'll tell you, he he played a phenomenal game. That that kid. I mean, he's been he's been I guess our me and Owen's backup for the last uh, two years, two and a half now, and he's really grown each year. You know, he he commanded the huddle well. He uh, made great calls. You know, put everyone in the right right position. I mean, they it was from an offensive line standpoint. You know, he played better than I did the first three games. I think. You know, he he had a really really great game, and um, I I, I really think highly of him, and I think. You know, he's going to do a great job for us wherever, you know, we play him or play myself. And so it was just great to see him really come out and have a, you know, really good first start because, you know, sometimes first starts are tricky. You know, they're yeah. – people overthink them and, you know, might get beat, you know, phys physically because you don't know the speed of the game. But, you know, he came out, played physical, made great calls, and it was just – it was awesome to see all that work, you know, come out and, you know, see him really succeed. Gavin, you kind of hit on it uh... – earlier in the show where you know the offense got going and and how you guys kind of felt like you have something to take away from that when we saw that offense moving those two first touchdown drives is, is that the offense that you guys were telling us about all throughout camp do you feel like 
that is what this offense is designed to look like? Or is there still more to even be unlocked? Yeah, no, I mean, I feel like we displayed what our offense is and should be. Um, I feel like, you know, potentially there is more, but, you know, it's just, you know, those two first drives, you know, we did everything perfect. You know, they were, what, 12, 13 play drives, ate up half the quarter. Um, and, you know, it's just those drives that really get us going. And those are, like, it's just frustrating because we know we can put drives like that together. It's just we're just not executing. And it just comes down to that. And, you know, that's what we've been working on. Um, and hopefully we can get it going this week. So, guys, I mean, this is a question for both of you, and then we can move on. I mean, you're one in three right now, and I, I wrote about it today. This program's been in spots in the past that were unfavorable. I, I think you guys started one in three and or two and three, excuse me, in 2018, and that ended up being a, a, a decent season for you guys. I think you finished the year five and two, um, and and I think your only losses were to like Miami and someone else, but. That was a good year, and obviously, I mean, you were four and four last year. Won your last five games, finished ranked in the top twenty-five. Is there a belief? I, I would have to assume yes that that things can turn around. And if so, I mean, what needs to happen? Is it? it, it and obviously, playing better is the answer. But what needs to happen for this turnaround to get going, like it has in recent years? Yeah, no, there's uh, there's definitely belief. That's one thing that uh, something about this team, this program that you. will You'll never see us give up, and you'll never see anyone quit. You know, that's it's one of those things where it's just like, hey, we're we're in the spot. We gotta dig ourselves out, and you know, go and win games. And you know, to do that, we just gotta be together. You know, everyone has to be on the same page. You know, working for the same goal, and just executing. I mean, that's the big thing we always talk about. The last, I think, the theme of the last, you know, four shows is I just said we gotta execute better, and we do. I mean, it just comes down to we're put in positions to succeed. We just up front have to be better. All around, wide receivers, running back, tight ends, wide receivers, you know, quarterback. You know, we gotta we gotta play better, and that's one of those things where you know, if we do that, we'll take care of business. Yeah, like you said, it's not like a belief thing. You know, everyone's believing, everyone's you know buying in, everyone's bought in. You know, we've worked since what January uh, towards this goal that we're on, and you know, everyone's kind of realizing that like everyone's got to step up in their own way, and everyone's taking accountability for their actions and what they did on game day or you know what they didn't do stuff like that but um you know everyone's coming together and uh yeah all right so we're gonna take a quick break when we get back we will be joined by pit starting running back rodney hammond jr also known as hot rod he will be our guest of the show this week gavin and jake have a couple of questions prepared for him then we're gonna play a game we're gonna do all of that and more on in the trenches with jake cradle and gavin Bar bartholomew coming up soon on In the Trenches with Jake Cradle and Gavin Bartholomew. Rodney Hammond Jr. will soon be joining us on the show. But before we do, we got to do an ad read. Jake, who's the segment brought to us by? Um, in the Huddle is brought to you by the one place in Pittsburgh where you can caffeinate and create. Brush and Beans Cafe in Murraysville. At Brush and Beans Cafe, you can enjoy a delicious latte, cappuccino, cold brew, and much more while relaxing and creating your very own masterpiece. For more info, visit our website at www.brushesandbeans.com cafe.com or give them a call at 724-610-3782 all right i'm gonna step away guys take it over rodney hammond jr welcome to the show rod man it's great to have you on brother what it do what it do <laughs> hey so i someone asked how, just explain like how it felt you know coming in against clemson and your freshman season and pretty much closing them out and like how I mean, you had some big plays in that game, the championship game, scoring. Like, how how was that a feel? Like, how did you feel as a true freshman coming in and doing that on the big stage? I mean, that was um that was one of my biggest games, honestly, because like uh, Izzy went down. I was kind of nervous. I ain't played the whole game. Like, I ain't played the whole game, so I thought I I was gonna like come in and play bad. But we was on the TV timeout. I remember me like taking a look around the whole crowd. I'm like, oh my god, I can't let nobody down in the crowd. <laughs> so I got in the game and I made a couple plays and I was like, I started getting like pumped up. So like every play just added momentum and I just took off from there. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, have you got something for him? Yeah, 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 Rod. So me and you, we came in the same class. Uh, I came early. I don't think you did though. But um, what was your first impression of me and like all the guys in our class? Like, what'd you think of us? I mean, when I first got in, I was like, I ain't gonna say I was nervous, but I ain't really like talking to nobody. Yeah, but I think everybody was cool and everybody was like family. So 
I mean, I fed in real, like real well with everybody. And we got straight to work and it was strictly business. Yeah. That's it. No, the championship year that year. But uh, so like, I mean, you're from Virginia, you know, I'm sure you had the opportunity to go to Virginia or Virginia Tech. And so why, like, what made you choose the University of Pittsburgh? And then what's, what's it like, you know, going down there and playing in Blacksburg this week, uh, this weekend? Um, I chose Pittsburgh because uh, a while back, Coach Beatty was here and like, we had like a good, good relationship. And he was just telling me about the program and stuff like that. And like, even when he was leaving, he was like still telling me like I'm in good hands and everything's gonna work out and stuff like that. And then I already had like relationship with a couple people on the team and like we was talking. Then like a couple freshmen like, yeah, bro, I'm 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 commit to Pitt and I'm stick with it. And I'm like, yeah, shit, I might as well commit too. So <laughs> damn right, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. And then like um, you said going to Blacksburg. I mean, it ain't kind of it ain't it ain't home honestly. And How far is it? It's like five hours from home. Oh, I'm shit, still Virginia, damn. But it's like five hours from me. I mean, the first, first year we went down there, I didn't get to play. I mean, the crowd was like, it was crazy. I yeah, that to, was wild. That was sick. Yeah, I wanted to play, but I mean, now that I get a chance to play, uh, you feel me? I'm going to do what I do. <laughs> yeah. right. Big game. Absolutely. Uh, Rod, you know, you're, you're running backs coach, Coach Powell. You know, he's, he's a character. Uh, what's been like one of your funniest moments with him? I guess I you could say. Lie. I got a lot of funny moments with Coach Powell, but like, <laughs> God, <laughs> they, <laughs> God, they look right. So I'm sitting on the bench. I forgot after what drive it was. And I just see him walk up to me like with a big grass stain on me. <laughs> everybody, like, everybody like, bro, you ain't just see Coach Powell fall? So Coach Powell walk up to me, go on, bro. We got to do, do better. You see how this fell? My, my, my rotator cuff messed up. <laughs> man, that jump was so funny. Oh, that's like, funny. He had a big grass stain on his pants. He was just fussing, man. That jump was too funny. Like, I ain't gonna lie, I've never seen him like that in the game. That was, that was funny. That's funny. He's, yeah. he's a character. <laughs> he's, he's unreal. He was yeah. in the uh, training room the next day getting treatment on his shoulder. I know. So. <laughs> messed up. When, when did that happen, Rodney? Uh, it happened during like a special teams. I forgot what special teams it was, but he had failed. He came to the sideline for a question. That joke was too funny. <laughs> That's funny, <laughs> Rodney. Can you can you hold your phone up while you talk? I just want to make sure you're not covering the speaker. All right. So, what we like to do now uh, is, oh guys, did you have any other questions for Rodney before we wrap this up? No, I'm all good. All right. So, Rodney, like what we'd like to do now is we like to play a game. Uh, normally, it's trivia. Gavin won last week's game under high protest. Um, we, we did fix it for him to win. He did cheat. Um, and he didn't even really do a good job cheating. Uh, no, not but really. We, we will not be cheating this week. Um, the, the game is pit coach trivia. So there are five questions I'm going to ask about your coaches. Each uh, comes with three clues about that respective coach. They're each worth 10 points. And uh, the final one is like, it's like Jeopardy. So there's a final Jeopardy. Do you, Rodney, do you have something to write with? If not, if not, there's no big deal. You can just answer out loud. I just answer out loud. All right. I'll wait. I'll have you wait. Uh, like we'll do like a count of three. So Jake and Gavin have to reveal their answers on paper. You can answer out loud. All right. I'm not going to lie. I don't have a pen on me either. So I'm going to, <laughs> I'll shout it out with Rod. All right. Uh, Gavin, I, I'll excuse Rodney, but I mean, you know, we've I know. been doing this for five weeks. Come on. I man. brought it to class. I was, I was being a good student athlete. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. Question number one. This is worth 10 points. This coach, his brother is a head coach. His father is in the College Football Hall of Fame. And he himself has coached teams in three different time zones in the United States. Again, your clue, his brother is a head coach. His father is in the College Football Hall of Fame. And he himself has coached a team in three different time zones. All right. Jake, do you have your guess? Yes, sir. All right. On the count of three. One, two, three. Say it. Yeah. Jake says, Tim Salem... Yeah, your guest, uh, yeah. Rodney. Yeah, I don't know that. One. I don't know that. One. 
You're all three wrong. The answer is Frank Signetti Jr. Your offensive Oh, player. I oh, knew that. I knew that. that. I knew that. that. Oh, my I gosh. I, I won't even think it. <laughs> that, yeah. Right? Oh. That's Frank yeah, that Sears went right over. College football. Yeah, Frank Sears in the my College head Football too. Hall of Fame after coaching at IUP for a long yeah. time. Yeah. His brother is, of course, yeah. the head coach of James Madison. And uh, Frank Jr. has coached everywhere. Uh, he's coached in California, coached the Chiefs, coached a whole bunch of teams on the East Coast. So, that's coach number one. All right. Man, I thought that would be an easy one for you guys. I, I started off simple I here. I wasn't even thinking on that one. That was crazy. All right. Yeah, All right. So, cool. coach number two. Uh, first clue for coach number two, he played against Pitt in college. Uh, this coach was hired by Pat Narduzzi in 2022. And the third clue is uh, he was released by a team – the night before the team played in a Super Bowl. Oh, I know this, I think. So, again, played against Pitt in college, hired by Narduzzi in 2022, released by a team the night before that team played in a Super Bowl. All right. Everyone got their answer? Yep. Three, two, one. Jake? Underwood. Coach Underwood. Underwood. Yep, yeah. everyone's yeah. got Coach Underwood. Okay. Yeah. That should have been the one I started with. Say, that's that's kind of harsh. Getting released the night before Super Bowl. He, he did get, uh, yeah, but he he did um, get an AFC. Like he he got a ring. They didn't win. They lost oh, to the okay. Giants that year. But he got an AFC championship ring because he was a part of the team. Um, but yes, that is that is tough. Uh, all right, coach number three. This coach played under Pat Narduzzi uh, in college. He played five seasons in the NFL. And his first full-time job was at Valparaiso. Again, this guy played under Coach Pat Narduzzi. He played five seasons in the NFL, and his first full-time coaching job was at Valparaiso. I'll, I'll give you another hint here. None of the coaches that I'm going to name are any of your position coaches. So Coach Powell's out, Coach Salem's out, Coach Borbs is out. Oh, so, what the... <laughs> Five NFL seasons? Five seasons in the NFL. Let me double check this because I'm I'm pretty sure that's what it said. Yeah. What? I'm I'm ready. All right. You got it. All right. I'm ready. Answer in three, two, one. Coach Manila? Coach Manny? That's, I mean, I'll just take take an L. I'm not going to say anything. I don't know. Gavin's taking an L? Yeah, I don't. Coach Manilak is correct. Yeah, Coach I'm Manilak really played. Right. For wait, wait, five... he he played in the league for five years. He played, according to Wikipedia, he played for the Bengals from 05 to 08 and the Buffalo Bills from 2009 2010. Damn, did you know that, Rod? I didn't know that. that I, I did not know he played in the I league. I put two and two together on that one. I Damn. I uh, didn't even know that. I mean, I, I I knew he played a little bit in the league, but five five years is a long time. Yeah, that's a that's an above average career. All right, so yes. Coach Four. So right now, uh, this, the the scoreboard reads Jake twenty, Rodney twenty, and Gavin ten. Yeah. In last plays with ten. <laughs> but we can turn it around. Two two coaches left. Coach number four. This coach, his first coaching opportunity was at North Central College, a Division three program that I'll add this in. Not that it matters. They beat my alma mater in the D3 National Championship last year, Mount Union. So I don't like North Central. But that's where his first coaching opportunity came. Uh, clue number two. He was a head coach for four years at his alma mater, St. Joseph's. And clue number three. He was the first defensive coordinator in program history at West Florida. So we'll go through this. I love looking at your faces. All three of you are like, what the hell? Um, first coaching opportunity came at North Central College, which is located in Illinois. Uh, he was the head coach at his alma mater for four years, uh, which is St. Joseph's in Indiana. And uh, his first he was the first defensive coordinator in program history for West Florida, which is a Division II school. I'll give you guys five seconds to think of an answer. Four, three, two, one. All right. Reveal your answers. Coach P. 
Coach who? Was, Coach Partridge. Coach Partridge. I was Sanders. Like Sanders. Jake and Gavin are correct. It is Corey uh, Sanders. <laughs> I didn't know. Dang, I didn't know he was on here. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't know he was a head coach either. When yeah. was that? Was that recently? Uh, I think it was like in – not recently. I think he's had like two or three jobs since then. No, okay. So, I was going to say. Um, but yeah, and he's been at Pitt for a while. I think he's been at Pitt for like – he's been at Pitt for most of your career, right, Jake? Yeah, my whole career, yeah. Yeah, so Six there you years. go. It, it's, it's been a while, so – all right, so through four rounds, Jake leads with 30 points. Gavin and Rodney tied for second with 20 points. Guys, it's final jeopardy. How much would you like to risk? We'll start with Rodney. Rodney, how much of your 20 points would you like to risk? I'm risking it all. Risking it all. <laughs> all right, here we go. Don't call him hot rod for nothing, folks. Gavin, you doing the I'll same? do it all, yeah. All right, Gavin's risking it all. Jake? I'm going all in. All right, here we go. Jake's going all in. So <laughs> this is a big question. All right, so now – for this final question, think not just coaching staff, but pit football administration. So this could include EJ, RJ, you know, everyone who's around the building that, you know, has an influence in how the program goes. Okay. Okay. Clue number one. This man graduated from West Virginia University. <laughs> it's easy. Clue number two, he has a son that is a current student athlete at the University of Pittsburgh. Clue oh, wait. Three, oh, yeah. Let's go. Clue number three, his high school alma mater is a Whippeal powerhouse. Jeez. This one ended up being easier than the others, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. All right. On the count of three, one, two, three. Coach Masala. Coach Masala. <laughs> yeah, that was easy. That was- yeah, that's, that's, that should be number one. I should have – yeah, you're right. Oh, That's well. our mentor. Uh, Rod, we had him for our mentor this year, right? Yeah, that's why I say that was easy. <laughs> yeah, that was my <laughs> mentor yeah. last year, man. <laughs> yeah. He is an awesome guy. Oh, my God. Amazing. Yeah. So, all right. Well, Jake still wins. He gets 60 points. He takes home yet another championship. I guess that's the benefit of being at Pitt for, for 45 years, right, Jake? You can, yeah, so you like can answer all these questions. So <laughs> we're going to take a quick break. When we return, we will finish up the show by getting everyone ready for Pitt's weekend matchup against Virginia Tech here on In the Trenches with Jake Cradle and Gavin Bartholomew. Back here for the final segment of In the Trenches with Jake Cradle and Gavin Bartholomew. Rodney Hammond no longer around, so it's just you guys. Uh, and guys, as we always do, we, it's four down territory. We're going to cover a lot, but before we do, Gavin, who is this segment brought to us by? This segment is sponsored by Rendine Consulting, helping companies, staff integrate and optimize their technology systems. Call 412-965-5933 for your technology needs. All right, guys, four down territory. As always, we start on first down, which is a headline reaction. And uh, this headline comes from the Post-Gazette. It's actually a story I wrote. And uh, I took no joy in writing this one. This one really sucked. It, it, it headline reads, Pitt loses all ACC offensive tackle Matt Consalvis to a season-ending injury. Matt Consalvis, obviously, well, not, not obviously. He's a friend of the program. He came on on our practice show that we thought would be our first show but actually wasn't. It was a great guest. You two are both obviously very close with Matt. Um, I feel like I've been able to develop a decent relationship with him as well, just interviewing him over the past couple of years. One of my favorite guys to talk to. His parents are always very visible on the North Shore on game day and on the road. I've had a breakfast with his dad a couple times at different Marriott's throughout the ACC country. But, guys, I mean, what what's this mean to you for Matt to be out for the season? I'll tell you, just uh, from a friend standpoint, you know, I heard for him, you know, that guy, he was, he was bound to have a great season. You know what I mean? He was, he was putting the work all off season, you know, lifting, running, eating right. You know, he was, he was truly going to have a, you know, a breakout season. I mean, he had, they considered last year a breakout season, but he was going to have a first team all ACC year, maybe, maybe an all American year, you know? So um, I'm devastated for him, but I know he'll, uh, he'll come back healthier, come back better than ever. And, you know, I'm excited to see where his future is. If it's here, you know, at Pitt next year, or if it's uh, him going to the NFL, you know, he's he's gonna have a bright future either way. So, I'm excited to see how he recovers, and you know, excited to watch him play ball again. Yeah, I mean, it was devastating to see him go down. Um, 
you know, he's had a great spring and fall camp working with him. You know, I'm right next to him being a tight end, obviously. But, um, you know, I was really looking forward to this year. I mean, we had a couple of games under our belt, you know, me and him working together on the line. But, um, you know, it just really sucks. You know, you, you work all this time or all this time, like I said earlier, uh, for 12 games. And, you know, it's just tough to go down early in the season like that and, you know, lose a key guy like that. And, you know, like Jake said, he's going to come back healthy. And, you know, we're supporting him with his decision on what he does and uh, hoping for a bright future for him. Yeah. I mean, it's no fun to ever write a story about a guy being out for the year, but everything you guys said, I mean, it hits home from a coverage standpoint as well. It seemed like his teammates really, really admire him, um, which explains why he was named a captain. And I, I, I too thought he was going to have himself quite the year. So very unfortunate news, but we'll move on. Uh, second down, say something nice. Uh, the question is, say something nice about Virginia Tech, your upcoming opponent, the Hokies. Say something nice. Yeah, so I would say uh, they're, uh, I think, two. I know two guys for sure, but, like, maybe three of their interior linemen. I've played for, like, the last four years. You know, they've been – I think they're six-year guys just like me, you know, went up against them at least four or five times now. And it's, it's been, uh, it's been crazy to see like their development and how much better they've got each year, you know, their, their front seven, but um, it's going to be exciting to go against those guys. I mean, it's, they got a great, great defense, you know, they're, uh, they always get after the quarterback. Well, you know, I think, I think they're going to come in hungry this year, you know, after, after last year we did them. So it's going to be exciting to, you know, get their best and get their all and, you know, see how we can do. And, you know, it's going to be exciting come Saturday. Yeah, you know, they're a, they're a decent team, you know, starting out rough, just like us, one and three. So, you know, we're both going in there. You know, we, we both need a win. Um, you know, it'll be a dog fight, and hopefully we come out with a win. But, uh, no, they got a good defense. Um, I don't know, offensively, I haven't really taken a look at it. But, um, you know, defensively, they got some guys that can make some plays and uh, definitely help them out. All right. Uh, third down is Jake and Gavin podcast player of the week, practice player of the week. Guys, who had the best week of practice from your point of view? We'll start with Gavin on this one. Uh, yeah, I'd say uh, Kenny Johnson. Um, you know, he's really starting to work in with, uh, you know, the ones. I mean, um, that fumble last week, you know, it was like a little misfit of a commu uh, miscommunication, you know, with the read. Uh, you know, the snap obviously got loose. So, you know, he's been working on that this week. All the receivers have. And, you know, he's just doing a great job. Yeah, I would say I got two. Um, I got an offensive lineman. Uh, last week I went with uh, Big Z, and I thought he had a great game. You know, just to touch on the North Carolina game, I think uh, Blake played extremely well, stepped up as a leader, was our honorary captain, and, uh, you know, led those guys, you know, as best he could. And then um, I'd say this year, uh, this this week, uh, offensive lineman, I see Branson Taylor. You know, that's a guy that uh, just seeing his improvement throughout the last, you know, four years that he's been here has been tremendous. I mean, the dude works at his craft every day. He just wants to be he, – he wants to be one of the best. He wants to be, you know, a great. And I think, you know, the the more he keeps working, the better he keeps getting. And it's it's great to see each week him getting better. And I think he's going to have a great week this week. And, um, you know, he – I think – I remember his first game he ever played, it was against Virginia Tech, his, I think, true freshman year, 2020, COVID year. Uh, we were out with COVID. I think me, Gabe – and Carter were all out. So, I mean, he had to step up and be like our, our swing guy or six, six man. He had a hell of a game that game, you know? So he's going to, he's going to have a great game. And I'd say uh, hot rods going to have a great game, you know, with Branson uh, paving the way, I think hot rods going to have a, uh, hopefully, you know, 20 yards rushing and maybe uh, two or three touchdowns. I'll throw one and two uh, from my minimal observations. Devin Whitlock balled out on the scouting yeah. team as a returner. Yeah. I, 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 I was really impressed. I saw him, so I'm puking afterwards because he was working so hard. And yeah. he just looked up at me and was shaking his head. I'm like, you earned that, man. Like, you, you, know, you earned every bit of that exhaustion. You you were putting in work. So yeah, he had a field he, day. He, he, he's, I feel like he's been, you know, one of the rocks of the week or whatever multiple times. He's, he's put together quite the, quite the effort for you guys on the practice squad this year. 100%. I'll say uh, guys like him are what really makes Saturdays easier. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, when you have – defense linemen that go hard every play it makes it easier for the game because you're getting game speed in practice and that's what that's one thing i i was amazed by i mean the defense was saying like even when he was on offense just i think wide receiver catches some screen passes and stuff you know he's he was making them work so it's gonna be exciting to see you know that pay off this week for the defense and our offense as well all right guys and the final one fourth down keys to victory guys in five words or less how does pitt 
beat Virginia Tech? Run the ball. Uh, Run the protect ball. the ball. Run the ball and protect the ball. Those are two things that would make your coach beam with pride. All right, guys. Yeah. That's all you guys got. That's all I got. Uh, that's all for another episode here on the Post Gazette Sports Now YouTube channel and podcast network. Be sure to uh, follow the Post Gazette and these two fine gentlemen on social media. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And keep tuning in to the Post Gazette Sports Now YouTube channel and podcast network for all of your Pittsburgh sports coverage. Take care. Thank you for checking out this content from Post Gazette Sports. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Check out our Apple Podcast channel for more podcast content. Click below for a special deal of 99 cents for a three-month subscription to the Pittsburgh Post Gazette.